G'day, Gary for Simple Audio Tips. If you'd like to have a closer look at the Rode NT-USB microphone, then stick around, I'll show you what you get in the box, its great features, how to set it up and start recording. Opening the box, I'm really impressed by the way the mic's packed. You know what it's like when you open up a new Apple product? Well, Rode have worked hard to give you that same feeling without leaving you wondering just how much of the purchase price went into the packaging. Now, these are all the items that you get. Now, included in that is a pouch to store your mic in, along with a silica gel packet. And there's a good reason for that, is to keep the microphone dry. Because of the way they're constructed, a condenser mic's performance will suffer badly when exposed to condensation. Out of the box, you have all you need to start recording to a PC or Mac, and that's the beauty of this microphone. Now, if, you, if your choice is an iPad, you'll need a genuine USB camera adapter to get that USB input. The microphone can be used on the supplied table stand, or it can be removed with the ring mount holder and fitted to a boom stand. This is how it comes out of the box. The ring mount is already mounted on the bottom of the microphone, as well as the pop filter or the screen. Now, before we go any further, I'll just re remove this so you can see how this all goes together. That's the ring mount separated, but see the pop filter is separated as well. Both the front and the back are very similar, but the gold dot on the front indicates the front of the microphone. That needs to always face forward. On the side of the microphone, you've got uh, two controls. Both of these controls do not in any way change the, the microphone's gain. That's all set inside the microphone from manufacture. You've got a, a little 3.5 millimeter jack to connect to your headphones. Now okay, let's mount the, the whole mic together. The windscreen goes on the base like that first, and then your ring mount gets mounted on the bottom and it's all it's really robust ring mount so it's not a problem to, to um, put it all together wind him all up now you'll notice this this is the way the microphone needs to be set up the screen at the front the windscreen is is located directly in front of the mic the ring mount gets placed directly facing the back so once that's in position Tighten up the, the nut on the bottom. Then you can get the base, the supplied base, and screw it into the little mount on the bottom. Now the base has different length legs. There's a short leg, which needs to be at the back, and two long legs that need to be in the front. And there you have it. The microphone is ready to use. Now to connect the microphone, plug the USB lead that has the square end into the bottom of the microphone and just be sure that you line up the plug correctly because it, it will only go in one way. The other end of the USB cable connects to your recording device. I'm going to use an iPad so I'll use the adapter. Connect the lead to the iPad. Once you've got the application open, which in this case is going to be GarageBand for myself, Go into the input settings and make sure you switch off the automatic gain control. Then adjust the level, the manual level of the audio input so that it meets your requirements. Uh, you need to make sure that you're speaking at the correct distance from the microphone and that you don't allow the microphone to distort. So now that that's all set up, ready to go, I can start recording. To give you a better idea of how these controls work on the side of the microphone, I've run a feed straight to my camera so the camera's audio will be directly monitoring what you hear in the headphones. I've got my headphones connected to the camera so I can hear the same thing. I've pre-recorded a track on GarageBand and I'll play that as a backing track as if you're doing a multi-track recording and you're listening to that recording and you're laying down another track. So I'll just start that playing. Now you can hear a mix between my voice and the backing track. The top control can vary 
the level of the backing track relative to the level of the microphone. Turning it to the left, I get more of the microphone. Turning it to the right, I get more of the backing track. And it gets to the point where you're not able to hear me. So this way you can get a nice balance between the backing track and what you're monitoring from your own recording. The bottom level is an overall volume control. You can turn that down or you can turn that up depending on the level you want in the headphones. The Rode NT-USB is a great package that provides great audio with simplicity of setup. I'm going to leave some links in the description below so you can check those out later on. If you want a reminder when we upload our next video, you can subscribe to our channel or you can follow us on Twitter or Instagram just to keep up to date. At Simple Audio Tips, we're dedicated to make sound gear easy to understand with equipment reviews and tutorials. If you've got any great questions or tips of your own, make sure you write them in the comments section below or type them in the comments section below. <laughs> Until our next video, catch you later.